In this video, I went through every step to launch a new personalization store called Fanprints. Here I am getting ad creatives for the print on demand product we'll be advertising. So we're out here right now getting some ad creatives and for the uh, personalization store. And you know, the reality is when it comes to personalization, it is what is in right now. And I've said it so many times and, and you know, any large business nowadays has just completely mastered it. And when it comes to selling online where competition is more fierce now than ever, I think that uh, personalization is, is definitely the way to go. And, and I wanna ask you, Julia, can you think of any large companies that, that have just completely mastered personalization? Yeah, so you can go anywhere from the high level companies, things like Netflix. If you think about Netflix, when you log in, the first thing you see is your name, personalized to you. So Julia, welcome. When I click that, they have shows that recommends to me. They've seen that I watch this or that and they recommend to me. Even companies Companies like small companies like Pup Socks. So you upload a picture of your pet and they print those right on socks. Very trendy, but very personalized. So in my opinion, it's easier to grow a business when it's personalization because again, it makes the customer excited. It makes the customer feel part. Customers rave about it, right? I, I post on Instagram, oh, I just got my care of vitamins that have my name on it. And guess what? Karen, Karen wants vitamins with her name on it. So Karen's gonna go and she's gonna create an order with vitamins. In regards to e-commerce as a whole, just look at Etsy. Their whole business model is built on personalization with hundreds of millions of visits each month with gross merchandise sales in 2018 at $3.9 billion. Now imagine if you can go out there, start a store selling personalized products just like them, and can do just 0.001% of that. That'd roughly be about $5 million, and that's where we sit with our store. So I know it's possible, but the way we see it, we've barely scratched the surface. Today we'll be taking every step in the process to get our personalization store fan prints up and off the ground and running. And it is a virtual store because I won't actually be using it. I'm actually going through the process of starting a new store behind the scenes right now. So I'm going through this exact process. So I thought this video would be very relevant and I've broke all, broken all the info down into five steps. Okay, before we get started, let me remind you of our objective. We're trying to build a store like this, this, or this. We're going to be selling personalized products that trigger that wonderful feeling of dopamine and will allow us to have an edge over other e-commerce stores, which we know is crucial right now considering how competitive things are. This model is so untapped, it's crazy. I mean, just look at Pup Socks right here. They did uh, like $10 million very early on in their business, which took the market by storm with these custom pet socks and Piper Lou, also an eight-figure brand specializing in personalization, selling these tumblers like hotcakes. Let's say, for example, I'm a family man. I have a baby, I have uh, kids, I have a family, a wife, and I understand what's hot when it comes to home decor inside of the home. So I decided to take that broad knowledge and dive into that niche. If you have not chosen a niche already, that's just fine. However, I would go with something that you are knowledgeable of. It's gonna make this process so much easier uh, and you're gonna be able to have an eye for finding things uh, quickly that you can build your business around. All right, step number one, we need to determine a budget. I get asked this question all the time, so I decided to add it in here as a step. Now, personally, I'd like to start a new business with at least $1,500. It gives you a really good cushion for air and learning. If you don't have $1,500, try to figure out how to get it. It's gonna make things a lot easier. Back in 2016, I got a loan from Avant for $5,000, which was more than enough money, and I literally had funding in days. A large chunk of your startup money is going to go toward ads and getting that data with the goal of building cash flow with the orders you have coming in. Now, when it comes to paying yourself, that should not be the main goal when starting, at least for the first three months when you're trying to bootstrap a new business. Um, you, you're really trying to get things going here. Step number two, it's time for product research and planning. I'd like to have a Google Doc open the entire time, writing links down, taking screenshots, writing thoughts down. And when I go to build my store, I'm gonna have that doc alongside me and it's gonna make the process so much easier. Product research is something that can easily be overcomplicated. Let me simplify it for you. The only resources we'll be using are Etsy and Personalization Mall. These are two very untapped resources, which makes it great because the more unique the product you have hitting the marketplace, the more success you will have. So what I mean by this is don't go out there trying to sell a replica of this and expect massive success. Other stores have already built their brand around this and they've spent tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars on ads. What I would do is see how I can go out and make this product different or innovate a little bit further to make it stand out. 
So for our store, our product line will include home decor items featuring the family and possibly designs featuring the family dog or the newlyweds. One brand that comes to mind as an example is Craft and Oak. Beautiful website layout and product line. And this, if I'm just being honest, is a brand I'd feel comfortable buying from. Okay, so this is my list of products that I quickly went and put together right here. They are very, very unique. Just a simple list of five. This first one right here uh, is a family portrait. Obviously, it has inspiration from The Simpsons. Uh, and I don't know what the legalities are on this, but I, I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, this particular listing has over 1,100 reviews. So it's definitely validated from that perspective. And not just that, but there are dozens and dozens of other sellers also selling this same exact thing. So this is gonna be our product of choice when it comes to advertising. When it comes to the design aspect, I am going to first make an order with somebody on here that looks promising. Ideally, it's gonna be a, a few different designers. So I'm gonna sort it by the best selling and let's just skip to the good part. I already did make an order with one of the sellers on here. This was the photo that was submitted. And I, I told him, hey, just do me in the photo with some kind of desert background. And he had no problem doing it. He, he submitted um, a very nice design file for the delivery, which is this one right here. Very high quality and not any different from what we've seen on Etsy. Now, if you find somebody that's good, in this case, this designer right here, and you start to get a lot of orders coming in, that's when you would message him about going private. Hey, let's go off of Upwork and let's communicate through WhatsApp. Let's communicate through Slack. And you can pay, the, pay them through PayPal that way. And they're a part of your team at that point. When it comes to product research, all I'm going to do is go over to Etsy and type in something like personalized family and scroll. And on this page, we have dozens and dozens of results. And I, and I can actually go a little bit more broad if I want to and type in something like personalized. And we have, again, hundreds of results right here. And these pages are filled with winning products. It, it really just comes down to being able to use our best judgment to find the ones that are actually going to work. Uh, so we go what, for what is unique, what has mass appeal within your niche, and what looks to be validated. So does it have a lot of reviews? Is there a similar product floating around the internet that is working well for somebody else? Any kind of validation we can find, we want to try to do it. As for the product, I can source a very nice poster or canvas like this on Printful. Now this seller is really marking his stuff up. A 16 by 20 canvas is $116 for one person. If I sold that canvas size from Printful and added in the five, fiber cost of $5, my straight profit would be $71. Now personally, I wouldn't price it that high, but everything is worth a test. One thing I also did was go into Google and type in top selling personalized products in 2018, keyword Etsy, and came across this article right here absolute gold mine. Knowing that these were best sellers, I can build off this idea and look at similar items. By this point in the process, we should be thinking about what POD fulfillment center we want to work with. Now, the three that I use and recommend are Printful, Guten, and Printify. As an alternative, you can also find manufacturers on Etsy, and this can be a massive advantage if they sell something unique and it's not really mainstream with a POD supplier. Ideally, you want to negotiate with the manufacturer on there and set up some kind of partnership. For example, something like this right here, you would not find with a POD supplier. It's very unique and I bet you it's very, very untapped. So when it comes to selling something like this, can you think of any points of differentiation in terms of uh, selling points for something like this? Well, Chris stays at his computer a lot, so we can make Chris at his computer in the background, your office, or if it was me, same thing. Me in my office working or maybe me playing a sport because I like sports or me playing a video game because I like video games. Just kind of creating your scene and how you want it. Step number three, we need to bring fan prints to life. To make this step quick, here's my launch checklist and you could just pause the video. By the way, the logo is made from Fiverr. Now when designing your store, don't focus too much on the micro details. Just focus on optimizing for conversions, creating a, a clean product page, a very seamless checkout experience when you launch your store. It's essentially going to be a very low quality version 
of what's to come in the future. And there's nothing wrong with that. Optimizing for conversions, focus on the looks later. So when it comes to the personalization apps I recommend, I A, recommend Upload Kit, which is gonna allow your customers to upload photos on the product page. And number two, it's gonna be bold product options. So you're gonna give customers the ability to pay for um, an extra feature to the product on the product page essentially. So for example, if I'm selling this right here and the customer wants to have two characters, characters in the portrait, it's going to cost me more money. I have to pay the designer an extra $5. So I have to bill the customer for that. So on the product page, I would say, hey, if you want two people, it's an extra $5, an extra $10, and they would add it. It's important to understand that personalization is a manual process. So for example, when the customer comes to the website, they upload a photo that they want used uh, for fan prints for this photo right here. I get the photo, I send it to the designer, and then the designer sends me back the final file. I then use that file to create this right here. So I go into Photoshop or I go to Canva, I create the final poster file that I'm going to um, upload to the Fulfillment Center website. Now, if you work with a POD fulfillment partner like Guten or Printful, they will give you the ability to opt in for new orders coming in as drafts. So if I go to Printful.com, all new orders I get in my Shopify store will show up as drafts pending my customization. So I'll be able to upload this file that I created inside of Photoshop to the POD Center. One quick note, before you buy your store domain, check the trademark availability. You might not buy your business trademark now, but knowing it's available will likely prevent any future roadblocks from getting it. Make sure you have upsells in place. So for our family poster that we're selling, uh, upselling something like priority processing or the ability to get your raw file for your own usage and to download it can be a major advantage and highly profitable. So for example, we're in the back end right now and uh, customers say they, they add to their cart, they would see this pop up right here that says, hey, if you want your art file, the art file that um, you know the fiber guy made will give it to you for $10. And the benefit of this is there's no cost, cost of goods involved in this, it's 100% uh, straight profit. Step number four, set up your email flows. It's the small things that make the biggest impact. For our email marketing, we've made about $790,000 or 20% of our revenue has come from email over the span of one year. Here are the must have email flows when starting. Number one, it's a new customer thank you. We have a sign for first time buyers and repeat buyers. Email number one is thanking them for their business and tells them what to expect. If you could incorporate a video like my example right here, it can be very powerful. And email number two, a day later, might talk about your brand. And this is an opportunity for social proof, like this news video right here, maybe sharing a piece of content. What we're trying to do here is a, establish social proof, and B, establish excitement for the product that is coming. Now, this email isn't really a big deal when starting. You might not even have the content. In that case, just make this an upsell email. Email number three, another day later, will upsell them your second best seller or a similar product based on what they already purchased, maybe even with a discount code. Now, this flow can extend far, upwards of beyond 10 days, and it will be very profitable. But to keep it brief, we'll stop right here. Next, you'll set up an abandoned cart flow. I'd say with about four to seven emails, and next you'll set up a newsletter flow. The third flow that you'll need, it will most likely be a replica of the abandoned cart flow with some slight variations in the first few emails. Set these flows up. So for a newsletter sequence, it starts off with email number one, simply telling them, hey, this is your discount and they can go and claim it. And by the way, the photo here, that's just taken from Etsy. Ideally, if, if you know, this was your store, you would know to use your own photos and not somebody else's. Email number two goes out a day later, nudging them saying, hey, it's expiring today with scarcity. And email number three is more of a content-based email because by this time in the process, if they have still uh, not purchased, then they must be on the fence about something. So with this email, uh, content-based email, we're, we're, we're establishing this social proof. So in this case, we, we have uh, in the email a video from Good Morning America. Step number five, it's time for running ads. By this point in the process, everything should be 100% in your store. The entire sales process, I would actually go through the process, make sure there's no roadblocks along the way, all apps are configured. By this point, you should also have at least 
two to three products on your Google Doc that you think are going to be winners that you can build a sustainable business around and we're gonna use those for our ads. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time at Facebook ads. Every business is different, product is different, niche is different and for, for you to go by the strategy I'm using um, and, and expect it to work out would just be foolish because again, all strategies are gonna be different from business to business and product to product. However, if I was testing a new product that I was confident in, uh, performing well, something that was unique, this is the, the process I would follow for the Facebook ads. I like to start with CBO campaigns straight out of the gate and launch a PPE ad alongside of it for engagement and social proof. So let's say that this is our ad and I've created three different variations of it, which I'd recommend don't just use one creative, let Facebook go with three of them and find the one that works best and serve it to the audience. Now with these creatives, I actually just shot them myself. Now, with these kinds of products, we have found static images to work best, mostly because, most likely because you don't have to explain the product, you know what it is by looking at it. If we do a video, it's usually just a slideshow featuring different customer or influencer images. But here's a quick tip. Ask yourself how you can stop the scroll when somebody's on social media. If you can use a dorky or funny image, do it. So without wasting any more time, I'll go and create my PPE ad with a very broad audience and broad targeting. I could target worldwide here, but I do want some English kind of comments, so I'm willing to pay a few cents more per post engagement. I'll then launch at $50 per day and publish. Next, we'll go and create our first CBO campaign with three to five ad sets within it. Now, I like to keep the audiences here relatively small, st still in the millions, and then expand to lookalike audiences if we come to that point. And I'd like to also start at $300 to $1,000 a day um, to get data coming in quickly and if we're pretty sure of something when we publish it. Real quick, I just want to clarify on what I just said. We use a lot of CBO campaigns now because we're very familiar with our niche and what interest groups will work best. Now, because CBO campaigns perform best at higher budgets, it might be wise when starting to first test interest groups in a separate campaign and then use those to then create a CBO campaign. For this tutorial, we'll start at just $100. So I'm gonna do this two more times and for at least two other ad sets. And as the results come in, if we see that it's working or kind of working, we'll scale it by 20% while it's still in the learning phase. You have to have 50 purchases, 50 is considered the learning phase. And after that, we can scale it very quickly if this product allows for it. Now, not all products are going to be scalable to insane heights. And that just means people probably aren't interested or it's possibly saturated. If, like I said, this, this comes down to having a unique product hitting the marketplace, the more potential large success you will have with it. If I have no sale after around $35, $40 on an ad set, I'll kill it. Do not overcomplicate Facebook ads. If you are getting poor results, it's probably because of the product. And if it is, you'll have a high link click cost, a low click through rate. You can look into the Facebook metrics and see why. I just wanna mention right now that Q4 is upon us. The best time of the year, especially when it comes to print on demand, you do not want to miss this. Uh, personalized products do so well during the holiday time. September of 2017 is actually when we started our main store and things took off so quickly. I wasn't even the best at Facebook ads at that time. And and when we seen our sales numbers that, that first year, first few months, uh, it was really the revelation that we needed that, that hey, this stuff actually works. If, if you're struggling right now, if, you, if you're trying to get your store off the ground or looking to make a lot of money, um, the time is near. Let me know what you think of this video. Was it helpful? I'm curious. There was a lot in this video. I, just let me know down below. And if you have any questions, be sure to also let me know about that. If you haven't joined the Facebook group, make sure to join it. And with that, guys, I will see you in next week's video.